spring practice is underway across the state. Saw a picture of Mike Leach on the practice field yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss got their spring practice started on Tuesday. Southern Miss has been going at it for a little while, but spring practice underway in Mississippi. My question for you, hey, Dad, and we'll start with Mississippi State, is what is the one thing that they either need to address, improve on, figure out, whatever phrase you want to use, what is the one storyline, the one thing that Mississippi State football and its fans should be focused on this spring that nobody's talking about. We know about wide receivers. We know about replacing Charles Cross and Lashley on the other side as well. It's not just Cross. What's the one thing that nobody's talking about when it comes to state? That's a good question. You know, because like you said, the, the, the offensive tackle, I mean, it's not just, it's just not just Cross. You got to replace Lashley too, it's both tackles. <sighs> I think, obviously, they're going to talk about Will Rogers a little bit uh, in terms of can he provide that big play depth. Um, defensively, you know, it's going to be about can you brush the passer better than you did a season. State State was not a good pass rushing team a season ago. It seemed like almost every game they would blitz. They had two or three plays where they would blitz, and they were a second away from a big sack, but the quarterback was able to get the ball off for a big play. Um you know, Jordan Davis is a guy who I think will, will add to that pass rush, but he's he's taking it easy this spring. You know, he tore his ACL in August, and they're still, he's still not, you know, 100%. So, they, they, you know, he won't be out there, you know, giving it giving 100%. You know, the, 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 the grad transfer, Marcus Banks, you know, sort of is he – or is it going to be the Juco transfer to Carlos Nicholson as that other cornerback spot on the opposite of Emmanuel Forbes? Um, State's an interesting team in that they don't have a ton of – Big questions. You know, Ole Miss has questions, right? Corral, the running backs. You know, I know they, they, they recruited new guys, but they're new guys. So you, you got to see what they have. You know, who's who? Sam Williams, who replaces the State doesn't really have those questions outside of Charles Cross. They just returned so many starters. So I guess the, the biggest question, Michael, is are they going to improve again? And State took a state. As, as, as much crap as we've given State for last year, they went from three and seven in the regular season to seven and five. They beat two ranked at the time teams on the road, and and should they, have won at least a couple more games. I mean, in reality, would have, but they with a have. competent kicker, they would have won two more. And then, and of course, it goes the other way with La Tech and and uh, and you know there were other close games, but regardless, probably could have been a nine and three team. So, Mike Leach, sort of you know the formula. Year one's a struggle. Year two, you're a little better. Year three, we, it's time to start taking off a little bit. But the schedule's so tough. It's, it's such a tough schedule. You know, they might just sort of be limited by that. But I think if this can be an eight-win team, everybody's everybody's happy. It, dep- you know, it depends on what eight, the eight wins are. I, I think an eight and four season, even with an egg bowl loss, three straight's really tough to swallow. But if you're eight and four, you should it's be natural appreciate. forward progression if you win yeah. eight games this year. So we'll see if that happens or not. So yeah, it's it's. You know you bring back a lot of production, but are you going to be better? Are you going to be better in 2022? And uh, eight wins will get you to the outback. Wait, nope. It will, get you the it'll get you Tampa Bay Bowl. Tampa Bay Bowl. <laughs> I don't want to go. Uh, the first two messages we got were kicker, by the way, for uh, for. But State. that's something that everybody's talking about. That's you know you, you, your question was what are they not talking about? State fans are talking about the kicker, Massimo Biscardi, and how that how he's going to do. That that's a that's a big question on an MSU fan's mind. How about special teams? I mean, I guess that falls into the kicker, but I assume he's talking about punt coverage and stuff like that. Is that the yeah, that I mean, special state at teams, least once last year was was not great. Uh, they they obviously they reshuffled the deck a little bit. Matt Brock off of special teams. Eric Malay moves from running backs to special teams. <sighs> They need to be better there because yes, special teams. I mean, obviously the Memphis game sort of stands out, but there were you know there were g- games all year where State had special teams issues, not beyond just the kicking game. And then, you know the punting was not was not great last year. They brought in a couple of new faces there as well. So we'll see. You know, I, I, Tulu Griffin. I, I want to see can he be a, a punt returner this year? He's such an explosive player. I, 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 State needs to find ways to get the ball into his hands. That that would just be an easy one for me. 
On the flip side for Ole Miss, everybody's talking about the quarterback competition. Really, that's kind of the only thing that anybody's talking about going into the spring is the quarterback competition. Uh, you'll get to see your first look at it tomorrow. I mean, they're, they're every Saturday of spring, they will have an open practice. I doubt they're going to show you much of these open practices, but you know, if you got young kids, you can go stand on the front row and see your favorite player if you'd like, I suppose. And then you'll have the spring game. That's all anybody's going to be talking about or focused on replacing Sam Williams. That's a big one. Highly, highly productive first-round talent. He won't go in the first round because of some questions, but the talent is there, and you've got to replace him. Some people are talking about that. I haven't heard anybody talk about linebacker. I mean, you lose Chance Campbell – in his one year, was incredibly productive, reliable, good tackler, all that stuff. He'll be on an NFL roster next year. Mark Robinson gone, had a great pro day yesterday. He'll end up on an NFL roster. You were really good. Uh, well, really good's a bit of a stretch. It's the SEC. You were very competent and solid at linebacker, which is not something you've been able to say in recent history with Ole Miss football, but now those guys are gone, so... I mean, Troy Brown, you get the transfer from Central Michigan. Uh, will he translate to the SEC? In fairness to, to Troy, his two best games last year were against the two Power 5 opponents that he saw, Missouri and Washington State. But no doubt the competition level rises dramatically from the MAC to the SEC. And then who else? I mean, is it Austin Keys? People in the program seem to really like him physically. He absolutely looks the part, but you don't know. I mean, is it Sistrunk? It's... There, there's a lot of questions at linebacker, and that's a spot that was low-key, really, really solid and reliable for you a year ago, and the guys that were solid and reliable are no longer on your team. So that's a position group that I, I will be watching with, with wide eyes to try to see who will replace those two guys because nobody's talking about it, but they should be. To me, the, the, the story for Ole Miss – Obviously, you know, college football, you replace players. You do. It's just part of the game. But replacing the number of coaches, including all of your coordinators, I feel like that's an underrated problem. You know, it's one thing when you're Alabama, and it doesn't matter who you bring in to coach because they're coaching a bunch of five-star guys, and, and that, that job is just a little bit easier. But at Ole Miss, I mean, so many new faces, right? And now the coaches are new faces, too. There's just not any continuity off of last year's great season. You know, all of the, 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 big, the big names are gone. And you replace them with talented guys. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of talent on this Ole Miss team. But can it come together the same way that last team did? That's, that's the question for me for in Oxford this year. This might be one of the biggest challenges in Lane Kiffin's head Absolutely. coaching career. Absolutely it is. 100% it is. Because now you've shown that you can be successful at Ole Miss. You won 10 games. You were a top 10 team last year. You went to the Sugar Bowl. And I'm not saying that Ole Miss fans are going to get, you know, antsy if he's 8-4 and four this year. But they're going to want to make sure, you know, if, if Ole Miss, let's say, let's just say, let's play worst case scenario. And Dart's not that good. And, and, and Ole Miss, you know, they, they're a 6-6, six 7-5 six, and five team. How are Ole Miss fans going to react to that? I don't know.